First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakat Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. And Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. As you see, we got Eve up here. And, you know, the more that the Lord continue to have mercy upon the ones who he gave the eye salve to, the ones who are actually in the truth, teaching the 100 percent doctrine. We really see that Eve is the damn enemy. Eve is the enemy, man. This is this is <laughs> this is Esau's Edom's pit bull right here. But as you see on the screen, it say it's not a cult, sis. It's the way of truly living a bloodline for only a group of people. Now, I don't know who sent this comment, but the comment is correct. And hopefully we get some edification out of this. So I'm going to pause it on every point to counteract her point. So let's let Eve speak. Oh, oh, no, for. Cause she actually say a lot in here. So, um, I'm going to read these scriptures first. This is why the Lord said, um, not to, you know, suffer a woman to teach. So Micah seven and 10 to say, then she, that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is your, how your power? My eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trotted down as the mire in the streets. And that is the attitude, the mindset that Eve have, you know, um, she's a bona fide Christian from my estimation, listening to this video and she is an enemy of the Lord. That's why I'll start it off with that scripture. She, that is my enemy. Let's continue. Cause I want to get these out the way, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence for Adam was first formed, then Eve and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the reason I read those two is because as it's saying, first Peter three and seven, she is the weaker vessel. All right. And when you go in, when you go into the word in the, in the Greek, I can't remember what it is right now, but it talks about being mentally and physically weaker. All right. And I'm ending on this one. Oh, no, I got I got one more after this. It's in this. Oh, and, um. First Corinthians 14 and 33 for the most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women, let your women keep in silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saved the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. All right. And then Proverbs 9 and 13, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and know of nothing. And when you go to Job 39 and 17, it said that he have not imparted in her wisdom nor understanding. So I'm going to play the video now and um, I'm going to pause it on, you know, the, the counteract her points. People be like, you believe Hebrew Israelites is a cult? And I do. <laughs> Because it is a cult. It's a religious cult, period. There's no evidence. Descendants of the transatlantic slave trade are related to the Israelites of the Bible. So what Hebrew Israelites try to do is use Deuteronomy 28 as a DNA test. I don't know who this is. All right, so number one, cult. Cult just mean worship. Like I said, if you watch my videos, I try to make my video straight to the point. I'm not about to have a 30 minute video. All right. So look it up. The word cult means worship. All right. Number two, she talks about how Deuteronomy 28 is trying. We're trying to use that as a DNA. That's false because we all know that this is by the spirit. And I want to get this one real quick. Because we say nothing about DNA when it comes to uh, Deuteronomy 28. And it said, but if 
but avoid foolish questions in genealogies and contentions in striving about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. So. It's a religious cult, period. There's no evidence. Descendants of the trans. And they try to use the word cult like it's a bad thing. That's why, you know, call law Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for our apostles and elders. We go into words. We learn that from them. So people just throw these words that the world put negative connotations on and cult just mean worship. Christianity is a cult. Anything. Uh, um, um, Islam is a cult. All right. So let's continue. Atlantic slave trade are related to the Israelites of the Bible. So what Hebrew Israelites try to do is use Deuteronomy 28 as a DNA test. I don't know who this is for, but Deuteronomy 28 is not a prophecy. But let's say it was a prophecy. Now, she's going to say something real stupid, but I just want to pause it. She said Deuteronomy 28 is not a prophecy. Now, when you go to Deuteronomy 28, matter of fact, let me just get there. Oops. But I'm going to start from 15, right? Now, I'm just going to read the first sentence. But it shall come to pass. Just that sentence alone right there, that's a prophecy. Because prophecy means, of course, you already know she don't know what prophecy means. It means to say before. That's what prophecy means. But the famous scripture that everybody hates on, <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, 68. But let's let, let her talk. Deuteronomy 28 as a DNA test. I don't know who this is for, but Deuteronomy 28 is not a prophecy. But let's say it was a prophecy. Y'all still don't fulfill all these prophecies. Deuteronomy 28:52 says, They will besiege you within. Ooh, hold on. See, I haven't watched this in a while. I was supposed to do this video probably like weeks ago, but the spirit got to be on you to do it in the, in the situation have to present itself. So, yeah, let's go to 52 and let her talk. All your gates until your high and fortified walls that you trust in come down throughout your land. What walls were besieged? 20 all right. So Deuteronomy 28 and 52 is a fulfillment of 70 AD. Now. She said, what walls was we <laughs> besieged in, right? So, like I said, this is real simple, but just 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 in case if you ever come across, you know, these people. That's why I said I'm gonna make this video. Maybe, you know, somebody might need it, you know, but anyways, um, so you come across these Christians like her talk about we don't fulfill prophecy. This is the reason why Israelites all over the world is waking up. That's prophecy. But anyways, Luke 19 and 43 is written in red. So we know this came out of Yahweh Shah's mouth for the day shall come upon you that your enemy shall cast a trench. Ooh, another word for trench is a wall about thee. And could pass thee around and keep thee in on every side. So they actually barricade us in by palisades and trenches. All right. In 70 AD, read the history on it. We was uh, the ones who remain in Jerusalem got starved out. They was eating leaves and leather belts and cannibalism. All right. And it said, and they shall lay you even with the ground and your children within you and they shall not leave in you one stone upon another because they destroy the temple that's where you get the archetypes from because you know it's not the time of your visitation all right so boom that was dismantled but let's let her continue Deuteronomy 28, 52 says they will besiege you within all your gates until your high and fortified walls that you trust in come down throughout your land what walls were besieged 28 we just read about it 68 says the Lord will take you back and ship siege it by a route that I said you would never see again there you will sell yourselves to your enemies as male and female slaves but no one will buy you last time I checked African slaves weren't selling themselves folks were selling them and people bought them and, and when did we see this in and what really really grinded my gears is this 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 is the part that grinded my gears number one this is why you have to go in to the original language. This is why you can't read every scripture, predominantly most of them, just by face value with the English. That's why people butcher John 3.16 because they don't go into the word in the Greek. 
So she complaining about matter of fact, let's let, let's rewind it. Take you back and ship to Egypt by a route that I said you would never see again. There you will sell yourselves to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no. And she's reading it from another translation. Which the KGV. It's like, yeah, I um, paused real quick because I thought I heard my son. Anyways, but yeah, she's reading from another translation. That's why you can't, you have to know when, uh, what translation fits. But she read from another translation, but I just want to butcher her on the word buy. She said that, um, let's continue. One will buy you. Last time I checked, African slaves won't sell themselves. See, because like now when you read it in the NLT, I don't know if she was in the NLT, but let's read it. it say, then the Lord will send you back in Egypt and ships to a destination. I promise you would not never see again. There you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves but no one will buy you so you see you see how that's a confusion right there because we ain't offer ourselves to be sale i mean to be um slaves we got fucking kidnapped <laughs> all right we got taken against our will but let's read it in the kgv it's in yeah how should bring in the egypt again see the problem is is that she, you see she ain't mentioning egypt that's that's too that's too deep for her but when you go to uh Exodus 20 and 2, it said that Egypt is the house of bondage. So that's what Egypt means. Egypt just means servitude. So I will bring you in to the house of bondage again with ships. By the way of whereof I spake unto you, you shall see it no more again. Talking about your homeland and also the wilderness. And it said, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. No man shall buy you. See, she said, wait a minute. Now let's go back and let her finish her statement. See Egypt by a route that I said you would never see again. There you will sell yourselves to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. Last time I checked, African slaves weren't selling themselves. Folks were selling them. And people oh, yeah, and, and she just said African slaves weren't selling themselves. So see, she don't even classify us as Hebrew Israelites. Well, she did start in the video like, yeah, we don't fit prophecy. So she think that we're African. So she said, yeah, we didn't sell ourselves. That is true. But well, let's listen. I bought them. And, and and she said Africans didn't sell themselves and people bought them. So let's go on to the word buy. This is why you have to go into the Hebrew in the Greek. So when you go into the word buy, which means redeem, um, the word is quana and to get acquired, create, buy, possess, to get acquired, obtain. And let's get to the point. So when you go in to a creating redeeming his people because that's what it means all right redeeming his people now let's get a precept that that will um bring it home on this point so when you go to nehemiah oops five and eight this is the same word and i said unto them we after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. All right. That's all I want to read because that's all I need. So it said, and I said unto them, we, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews. Let's see what this word redeem is. I bet you it's the same word as quina. So just to show you that when it said buy, it's talking about redeem. Yep. Quina. Same thing. Redeeming his people. So when the scripture said that no one shall buy you means no one is going to save you. The only one that can save you is the one that put you in the captivity through punishment. Yahweh Shah is the only one that's going to save us. So when the scripture says that and no man shall buy you mean no man shall redeem you. As you see, all the marching, all the begging your enemy to, to basically create, uh, let us be equal with you, master. All we want to do is just be equal. All we want to do is just get a fair shake. As you see, it's not going to happen. All right. I'm talking about as a nation. Yes, you got Israelites who sold their soul and they doing a little OK, but they still just a nigga in their eyes with money. As long as you entertaining them, they OK with you. So let's continue. And then we go back to Egypt because I got questions. Most Hebrew Israelites will tell you we was on literal ships, but we went back to metaphorical Egypt to be literally sold again. It don't make sense. See, 
And, and, and this is <laughs> that's why I started off with those scriptures. Like, of course, it don't make sense. You ain't even supposed to be speaking. You ain't even supposed to be teaching. You're supposed to have a husband and your husband is supposed to know. As the scripture said, if, if, if she will learn anything, let her learn from her husband. But let's go back a little bit. Because she says something. And people bought them. And, and when did we go back to Egypt? Because I got questions. Most Hebrew Israelites will tell you we was. And that's the thing. She don't know what Egypt mean. She don't know what Egypt mean. It means the house of bondage. And then she said metaphorical Egypt. So I'm guessing maybe she might be referring to this. Because I know she had to hear it. Revelation 11, 8. In her dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually. So she said metaphorically. All right. So, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All right. So that's why the scripture said precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's how you break down the scripture is putting a puzzle together. All right. I bet she in. Let, let, let me let her continue. On literal ships, but we went back to metaphorical Egypt. See? She's so confused, but she said it at the end of the video. You know what I'm saying? To be literally sold again. It don't make sense. And going back to, I just want to get a couple more. Because she said that Deuteronomy 28, and she basically implying that we don't fit prophecy, right? So we're going to get a Hebrew is a light one-on-one -on -one scripture. So it said that the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high. So we got to find out what the spirit is. All right. So the spirit bear witness. So what is the spirit? It is a spirit that quicken them. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the word is the spirit and we fit the word. Matter of fact, when you go back to Deuteronomy. And get 46. So it says, and they, and they is talking about the curses, shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder upon your seed forever. And when you go into that word uh, forever, it talks about just a, um, a long period of time because we all understand that, you know, it's the end of a punishment and the Lord is going to give us the kingdom. So the point is, is that Eve don't know what the hell she's talking about. And she even said she was confused. But this is why if you are confused, then why are you talking? See, the problem is, and then you even have men with this mindset, uh, mind state. So. I just want to hear her say I'm confused again. Oracle Egypt to be literally sold again. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. Of course, it don't make sense because you, as the scripture says, matter of fact, let me end it on that. Because the most high have deprived her of wisdom, neither have he imparted to her understanding. So that's what women don't understand is th this is not meant for you. The Lord gave you instructions. Matter of fact, when you go. Now, I am going to end it on this one. The Lord, he gave you more instructions, but I just want to get this one. So it said, notwithstanding, she shall be saved. In childbearing, if they continue in faith, so believing and the way that you believe in the Lord is by reversing your husband. Scripture said that Yahweh is over Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah is over the man, the man is over the women, the women is over the children. That's how it goes. All right. So the way that you reverence Yahweh Shah is by you reverencing your man and treat him with respect. And that's how you show your faith, because faith is an action word. And it's said in charity, which is love, and holiness with sobriety, which means you ain't going to be out here twerking, uh, going to the club every damn night, and just being out here, being worldly, being like the rest of the Eves out here. You, sh you should be set apart. That's what holy mean. All right? But, you know, I can get a whole bunch of more scriptures, but I just want to hit on her points, and hopefully this video is edifying, and shalom.